Well, good morning. Welcome to Hardison Baptist Church. It's good to see you here with us this morning. And happy Mother's Day to you mothers out there. I know y'all are excited for today. Today, the, um, I chose the songs in a, in a way that would, obviously, we want to glorify the Lord and, and worship Him. But we also uh, are songs that we're choosing so that uh, we can be reminded of what our mothers taught us. And uh, we'll start with 385, 385. So if you could grab your hymn book and find that, stand with us as if you can when we sing Trust and Obey, because that's what our moms taught us to do, was to trust and obey. <laughs> When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but a smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sign nor a tear, can abound while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil He doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but it's blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at His feet, or we'll walk by His side in the way. What He says we will do, where He sends we will go, never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other Jesus, but to trust and obey. Amen. Well, it's good to see everybody this morning. Good to have all our guests with us today. Miss Janie, you packed a pew, didn't you? It's a shame I didn't pack a pew today. You'd be getting the prize for it. But you got, the prize. yeah, a pew and a half there, yeah. <laughs> Amen. It's good to be in God's house this morning. So many uh, well, I don't say the right way to say this. I probably shouldn't so submit, say so many strange faces here today, but I know many of you, some of you have not met, but I just want to assure you, you're sure welcome at Hardison Baptist Church this morning. I hope you're made to feel welcome, and we're glad you're here as our guest this morning, and happy Mother's Day. It's a good day. It's a good day to be in the Lord's house today. Let's go ahead and ask the Lord to bless the service. Brother Bryant, good Sunday school this morning book of Ruth this morning. Thank you, brother. How about I pray for the meeting this morning? Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be together, Lord. We just thank you for your love for us that is just so unmatched. Yes. Lord, we just thank you that you died on the cross for our sins, and Lord, we thank you that you rose again the third day. Father, we pray that you would just bless this service now. Lord, just calm our hearts as we're going to be uh, tempted by Satan to be distracted by things in our life, things going on later today, things that are just carried on. And Lord, I pray that we would be mindful of what you have for us this morning. May we be able to pay attention and learn from your word and be drawn closer to you because of it. Lord, we pray that if there's anyone here this morning that has never placed their faith in Christ and Christ alone, that yes. today would be their day of salvation. Amen. 
Father, we love you and we thank you. We just pray that this will be a service that honors the mothers and also that honors our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, just a couple of quick announcements. not going to bore you to death. They've been on the screen for about 15 minute, minutes, but I do want to mention uh, no uh, PM service today. Man, I tell you what, back in my earlier days in the ministry, if somebody had a uh, you know, had surgery in the hospital for two weeks. Man, I preached at them two weeks about missing church and all. But uh, not really, I'm joking. But I was so adamant about not ever missing church, you know, but as I get a little older and a little older and then a little bit more older, I realize, you know, it's not, uh, it's not in the Bible that we're here Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. But however, most of us are, and I appreciate that. But days like today and Father's Day and Resurrection Sunday and things like that. It's not going to hurt us, hurt us to miss that even. So go spend time with your family this afternoon and enjoy that. I believe the, I believe the Lord's honored in that too as well. So no service tonight. And we'll just look forward. Let me go back and back to Tuesday night. Uh, I just want to thank everybody again that participated, that brought food and everything to preachers, Middle Georgia Preachers Fellowship. We hosted that meeting, and what a great meeting we had. And I was just so proud of y'all uh, just being such wonderful hosts. I thank you so much for that. And the preachers have made a lot of comments that came, and just a good time. Then let's skip forward a week. This Saturday will be the uh, baby shower for Miss Noel here at the church. And I'm trying to real inconspicuous. 1030, I was on that like I knew what time it was. But 1030 this coming Saturday in the uh, fellowship hall. And uh, it's just good to be here this morning. Good to see each of you here. Uh, I do want to mention, if you know some, I know some of you out of, from out of town and from a ways off and, and all that. But if you're local and all, if you don't have a home church, we'd love for you to fill out a connection card in the back of the pew in front of you that we can get in touch with you and and uh, find out more about you, whatever information you feel comfortable leaving with us today. But we're glad y'all are all here today, and again, happy Mother's Day. Come on, Brother Brian. And with that theme of <clears throat> things that our mothers taught us, is uh, 516. You can take your hymn books and turn to 516, and you can remain seated as we sing about that sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known. In of distress and grief my soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempter's snare by thy return sweet hour of prayer sweet hour Yeah. 
out while passing through the air. Farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer. Amen. Turn back to 115. 115 is uh, love lifted me, and our mothers definitely taught us how to love. So to be thankful for that. And of course, we're speaking of the love of God. So here, stand here with me if you can, as we sing all three verses of 115, Love Lifted Me. <clears throat> I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. Could help. Love lifted me. All my heart to Him I give, ever to Him I cling. In His blessed presence live, ever His praises sing. Love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best songs. Faithful, loving service to to Him belongs. Love lifted me. Lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Souls in danger look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. He your savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Okay, hold on. Don't be seated. Don't be seated. Because that'd make, okay, we're going to do little things a little bit different this year. I know it's Mother's Day. That's a national holiday. Not, well, it has spiritual value, but it's not what I'm saying. It's not like Christmas or something. So I reserve the right to change it around a little bit if I want to. And what I mean by that is I'm going to ask all the ladies here, let's go with 17, 18 up, something like that. Not just mothers, all the ladies here, if you come up, line up across the front. Brother Ricky, come up here. I'm going to get you to help me if you would. Brother Brian, if y'all would help me. But all the, all the ladies, let's go 17 and up, I guess, 18 and up, 18 you up, adult. Hey, before y'all, before y'all step this line up, let me get up in here. Yeah, that's fine. Just don't fall down. Some of y'all step up back. Yeah, if y'all would do that, maybe some of you step up. Just please, nobody don't fall. I ain't stepping up. <laughs> yeah, come on, Miss Jean. Get in the spirit of it. Jump on up there and show them how to do it. <laughs> well, I think it will be. I hope so. Well, amen. I, I want to include everybody this year. Just do it a little bit different and all. And honor all the ladies here today. We appreciate it. And I know I'm gonna, uh, the message may be a little bit more focused, but certainly 
hopefully all inclusive as well there too. But I just appreciate all of you. And uh, I'm gonna tell you what, I, I, boy, it's a good crowd of ladies. I'm, I'm thrilled that y'all are here. I appreciate. I, 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 I think so too. Y'all better y'all better set it straight and do right now. They got you. <laughs> Miss Jean, come on, get in order now. <laughs> Amen. Well, I, I don't really know what to say. I just want to say thank God for uh, all these ladies that's here today. We appreciate it. And we as Hearts and Baptist Church want to honor each of you. We got a gift. Brother Ricky and Brother Brian, if y'all get those bags and pass out a little gifts and all that. And there's a special one that's got a $500 gift card for Miss Jean. Make sure she gets that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all have to all wrestle that out. <laughs> Amen. I see Brother Ricky's letting them get theirs. He's passing them out. So if y'all got a bad bag, I guess you should have been on Brother Ricky's side. <laughs> Is everybody? Everybody get one? All right, guys, it's our time to kind of honor them with a good round of applause. <laughs> Amen. 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 Appreciate you ladies coming up. You can be seated. <laughs> you ain't opened that bag yet, sister. <laughs> Amen. Okay, now there's. Now, now, I shouldn't have to say this, but I feel like I might ought to for, for just a couple's sake, particularly that lady with the hat. Of, of the things that's in that bag, there's about six or seven little pieces of good chocolate. I know ladies love chocolate. But let's try not to have candy flow all over the sanctuary this morning for good. <laughs> Amen. Y'all listen to worship as Miss Kathy sings for us this morning. I love the sound of rat paper rattling. <laughs> Don't worry about it.
you are worthy. Savior, sustainer, you are worthy. Worthy and wonderful, worthy of worship and praise. Almighty Father, Master and Lord, King of all kings and Redeemer, wonderful Counselor, Comforter, Friend, Savior and Source of a life without end, you are Day in the, amen. Thank you, Miss Kathy. I'll tell you what, if she's going down, y'all bear with me just a minute. Because if it's possible, I'll trip over that. And Miss Jean would surely, yes, children are dismissed to children's church. Thank you. See you, buddy. A hug. Oh, a hug. All right. <laughs> Amen. And that ain't even Father's Day. How about that? <laughs> Y'all turn your Bibles to 2 Timothy, if you would. 2 Timothy. Brother Thess, we appreciate y'all. We don't take it light that y'all drive all the way from the big city of Butler. But I don't know why none of our folks won't sit with y'all today. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Amen. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all making that drive. Y'all pray for uh, Brother Wayne, his wife Vicky, her father-in-law passed away. I mean, step stepfather, excuse me, passed away. The funeral service uh, Friday. And I'll, if y'all just remember to pray for the Peacock family, if you would, and a lot of others on the prayer list. And all, Brother Wayne, good to see you here this morning, brother. Um, you can take a couple of these bags, one to Miss Peacock, one to Miss Vicky, if you want to, or you can wait till she comes back and get it, whichever one. Okay. Second Timothy, if you would, when you find your place, stand. I'm going to read the first five verses of Second Timothy chapter 1. Well, it's sure good to have everybody here with us today. I appreciate you all being here today. I, I like to try to call out by name and identify and recognize guests, but there's so many of you here today, I'd surely mess up somewhere along the way, so I just do it collectively. Thank you all for being here. We appreciate it, and, and I don't take it light that you're here. appreciate it. We've got some people that are out at different places today. Brother Scott texted this morning. Him and his wife went to church with their son this morning, different ones. I know they're doing that. And the Tillman's up in somewhere above the Mason-Dixon line. I can't remember where. Where at Michigan, yeah. Or is that Michigan? <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 1. The Bible says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus. Boy, I like that promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, don't you? To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. 
when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I'm, not, and I'm persuaded that in thee also. I'd like to continue on to read just some good stuff there as the Apostle Paul writes this letter to young Timothy, a preacher boy, his son, not by blood and that type of son, but his son in the spirit and in the ministry is one that he, preacher boy, that he trained up so to serve our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But that letter, he calls a few things out there in that introduction. You, you can be seated. There's many tough jobs out there. Some require much physical labor. Well, I think of a roofer, brick mason, iron workers, and I know that list goes on and on. Some require a lot of patience. School bus driver, customer service reps. Can you imagine dealing with public the way people act now and have no, very little respect for anybody? Can you imagine the patience it would take to be a customer service rep and child care workers, but what kind of patience would that take now? Some, some jobs require great knowledge. Well, think about the doctor, but we hope we, when we go see him and we're sick, we hope he's studied up. We hope that he's uh, read a book lately and knows something about what he's doing. They, they, it takes a lot of knowledge. And an engineer, well, we hope those engineers have knowledge when we get in the automobile and start it up and get going down the road. We hope they've done their job. I think about a pilot. Well, they, that's a lot of Got to be a pretty smart fellow or lady to fly an airplane. Mike Rowe does a show called Dirty Jobs. How many of y'all ever watched an episode of that? Man, it puts, the, I mean, it puts things together, makes you appreciate certain jobs and makes you appreciate those that come pick your trash up and different things and, and, and all. But uh, I know on that show they go between, behind the scenes of different occupations and I, I saw one where they he rode along with a guy that serviced porta potties one day. Woo! I ain't saying I wouldn't do it, but I'm glad today that I don't. But if there's anyone here today that does, hey, let's salute you, amen. <laughs> but what what a job! Uh, trash collectors, coal miners, such as that, Mike Rowe would go on the scene with those and uh, show what goes on behind the scenes. This morning, I want to do my best to honor mothers. There's this very physically demanding patience testing, great knowledge requiring, and often dirty job. Pray with me and for me as we may honor Christ Jesus and honor mothers this morning as I preach. Mother, a full-time, lifetime job. Let's pray. Father, I come to you this morning in Jesus' precious name. God, I sure thank you for everyone that's here today. I thank you for those that may be watching on live stream this morning. We thank you they're able to do that and we're able to broadcast. But God, here today, I especially thank you for all these, especially our guests that have made it this way that we come together for this Mother's Day. Lord, help us. Lord, I pray that you be with those in back in the nursery or those in junior church back there. God, I pray that you'd use them, work in the hearts and lives of those little ones back there. God, I pray here that you'd help me to preach. God, help me to, Lord, that we'd honor you, honor the Word, and that we'd honor mothers here today. Lord, if there's one here today that does not know you as Savior, one person of all that's here, surely out of this number there's at least one that's never trusted you as Savior. God, I pray that you'd bear, bear down and work in the hearts of those and put them under conviction, Lord, that the day might, today might be the day they choose you and have their sins forgiven. God, you know the hearts of the people here. Maybe people here with heavy burdens, I'm sure it is. And Lord, I pray that you work in their hearts. They might be encouraged being in the house of God. Lord, help me. Use me, make you real big, and me real small. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today is a special day set aside to honor mothers. Sure, we want to honor all our ladies together as we have bringing them up and, and, and clapping for Miss Jean. 
But with it being Mother's Day, I want to preach some focus more back towards that. But of course, for everyone this morning, I want to say I realize it's a bittersweet time for a lot of reasons and a lot of circumstances. I think back uh, December 28th, 2020, all that, you know, 2020. How many of you remember 2020 and just wish we could go back and do it over again? Nobody. I mean, what a terrible year, seemingly. I, I shouldn't say that. The Lord's still blessed and God's good always, isn't he? But it still was a tough year, wasn't it? A tough year. Not my year closing. I'm not up here for your pity or anything. I just want to say I identify with the difficulty of the day, December 28th, 2020, uh, my mother passed away, and on, on New Year's Day, they, myself and my son preached my mother's funeral and uh, to close out an already terrible year. So, so I understand. And then the 10th this past week, Thursday, was my mother's, would have been her birthday. It was her birthday. So I understand it's a tough day. Many of our mothers have gone on ahead. Uh, we should, I just want to say on that, we ought to honor our mothers as long as we live. Not as long as they live, but as long as we live, we ought to always honor mothers. There's some that desire be a, to be a mother and haven't, and some have children that have passed on. I promise you this morning, this is a very tough day for me as your pastor because it, I know it's a tough day for some, and I don't like it when my sheep hurt. I really don't. I'd rather we all be joyful and happy and all, but some things are just tough and tough to deal with. But just understand God's with us in all our difficulties, all our times. Brother, good job bringing some of that out in Sunday school this morning. I appreciate it. I'm going to plug Sunday school there again. Uh, and and uh, I, I, I just want to encourage you, if you're not attending Sunday school, please come an hour early and, uh, and, we, we, and uh, partake in, in the fellowship we have and, and all that in Sunday school and but the good verse-by-verse verse teaching of the Word of God. I appreciate it, Brother Bryant. With all that said about mothers and the toughness of the day, it's kind of a bittersweet time and all that. I think we'd all agree that mother's a full-time, lifetime job. Wouldn't you agree with that? And may I add a high calling. The society doesn't necessarily see it this way, but what a high calling to be a mother. And mothers, that's something to be proud of, to be a mother. It's kind of cast aside and, and uh, not of much importance in society we live in, but, but we ought to honor mothers. Through the years, I've read some fun facts and some quotes from people like Phyllis Diller. Now, when I say Phyllis Diller, a third of you have no clue what I'm talking about, and the third that do know, all you can see is a woman with a really messed up hairdo. You know what I'm talking about? But quotes from people like her, maybe some past presidents and, and uh, different things, uh, and all that, I want to do something a little different today. I want, to, I want to commit, I don't know if you can commit an oxymoron. I guess everybody knows what a, no, you, when I said moron, some of you thought well, you're fixing to become one, right? But, but I, I, I know, I don't know, I know an oxymoron is two things that don't, don't go together. And I guess when you commit one, if I do this, but I want to tell some dad jokes to you real quick. I don't, I'm not a guy that gets up and tells a lot of jokes from the pulpit, but but, uh, but I'm going to do that today because I think we ought to make light of it and have a good time today in God's house. But here's a few dad jokes for Mother's Day. Are you ready? <laughs> Y'all excited? My wife's like, oh, boy, I wish you'd let me see your notes before we did this. But you know I'm funny. I mean, of all people, my wife knows I'm funny. <laughs> my children do too, or they did when they were three, four, and five. But since they're grown and married, I ain't near as funny as I thought I used to be. Why is a computer so smart? Because it listens to its motherboard. <laughs> son says, Dad, you know how the difference between a pack of elephants and a pack of cookies? No, son. Well, it's a good thing Mom does the grocery shopping. <laughs> Aaron, what did the mother bullet say to the daddy bullet? Fran says, what? Aaron says, we're going to have a BB. <laughs> uh... What did the mother rope say to her child? I'm supposed to say what right there? Wait a minute, let me say it again. You may, I made may you forget the first part. What did the mother rope say to her child? Don't be naughty at school today. <laughs> uh, what did mother broom say to the baby broom? 
shh, shh, shh. It's time to go to sweep. <laughs> a mother was trying to get her son to eat carrots. She said, they're very good for your eyes. The son said, how do you know? She said, you ever seen a rabbit wearing glasses? <laughs> Ryan said to his brother, said, why did you chop the joke book in half? And John said, mom said I should cut the comedy. So with that, maybe I need to drop it right there, okay? <laughs> so I, need to get, I guess we need to get serious. Back in the text here this morning, uh, I, I often say this, uh, I guess because I'm kind of silly and sometimes I, whether on purpose or not, end up at a silly moment and maybe a time of laughter in our services. But I've always said this, if Christians can't come to church and have fun and enjoy stuff at church, I'm talking about decently in order. Now, I'm not talking about being crazy. But if we can't enjoy ourselves and smile at church, something's wrong. I don't think church is supposed to be a place where we're supposed to come and be sad and feel miserable and hurry up and get on out of here. We ought to enjoy our time in the house of God, hadn't we? But back in our text, the Apostle Paul's writing to Timothy. In verse 4, Paul speaks of the passion that Timothy had. He speaks of the tears there. Uh, maybe he's speaking of the time of the tears of their time of departure and their friendship that was so close as they served together preaching the gospel going from town to town and seeing churches planted and established. And, and maybe he's speaking of tears that, that they shed one for another and their love for serving together. And maybe he's speaking of just Timothy's uh, uh, tears of compassion as they went town to town and saw the lost folks without hope and, and the, maybe the tears over their lost condition and their, their eternal condition lest they get saved and maybe it's tears of joy as those got saved. We don't know. Uh, the Bible doesn't really specifically say about those tears but it just mentions, mentions, mentions those tears. Uh, then Paul mentions being filled with joy in verse 4. The latter part says, greatly desiring to see thee being mindful of thy tears uh, that I may be filled with joy. Uh, and we ought to be people that are people of joy. Uh, uh, and he's talking about the godly heritage there that Timothy has. And, and he speaks, uh, and he goes on in verse 5, and he, he likens this to the, uh, talks, go, the filled with joy. And he says, when I call to remembrance that the unfeigned faith, I mean the, the real faith, not fake faith, but the real faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded that in thee also he's persuaded by seeing Paul's testimony, his faithfulness, and knowing it came from uh, the, the, the was passed down, this faithfulness, a, a loving grandmother uh, that was a mother of faith, a, a loving mother that was a mother of faith, and then Timothy. In Acts chapter 16, verse 1, is kind of interesting. Uh, it says, then came he, talking about Paul, to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, it's Timothy, the son of a certain woman, speaking of Eunice there, that he just writes, just spoke of, says, which was a Jewess and believed, but his father was a Greek. And I think it's interesting there that he calls out with, he speaks of the joy, and then he speaks of his heritage, his godly heritage, and his mother and grandmother are named. And then over in Acts chapter 16, uh, you know, before they got to Philippi and the planted the church at Philippi, we have the book of Philippians written to, the, and they go to jail there in the Philippian jailer and all that. I hope you're familiar with those good Bible stories and great truths where the jailer says, what must I do to be saved? And he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. But he says, the mother, which was a Jewish and believed, but his father was a Greek. I think it's interesting that it mentions his mother and ties together and brings out the fact that she was a, was a believing mother. His father was mentioned as a Greek. Now, he may have been a believer that was a Greek. Being a Greek didn't eliminate her from the love of God or the possibility of salvation. But all I can go by is the Bible points out the mother being a believer, but the father just identified him by his nationality, I guess we'd say. This speaks volumes for this godly mother. Let's talk about a few things this morning concerning mothers. Uh, I, of course, I've already told you my mother's gone on in heaven now. Uh, she raised, she had four of us children in five years. Uh, 
My older sister was born in 59. I was born, I was the baby, I was born in 64. And uh, Daddy broke his neck in a car wreck in 59, so he probably wasn't a whole lot of help around the house for a year or two. And then he's gone off working again on heavy equipment. So she was, uh, you know, by day she had her hands full. And then growing up, and I, I remember watching Mama's joy with the children and uh, taking us to do this, to get ball uniforms at the last minute and scout outfits and all the little pieces you had to get for those things. And, and that was just one child, and she had four of us. I know she'd run crazy trying to get us and try to see that we had the things we ought to have and, and taking us to Sunday school. Let me start back there and making sure we was at the house of God. I appreciate my mama taking us to Sunday school. It was so important to us the day that I was born, February 9th, 1965, 64, excuse me, was a, you started to say you lying, didn't you? <laughs> but uh, uh, February, 4, February 9th, 1964, I was born at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. My three sisters were in Sunday school that morning. My mom was serious about us being at Sunday school, being at church, being at the house of God. And my wife, I've watched her raise our four children and, uh, hey, I'm the preacher here. I can talk about my mom and my wife a little while if I want to. Amen. But I've seen what they've been through as a, as a mother. I've seen what she's been through as a mother. I've seen her cry when our children's hearts were broken. It may have been times hers was broken as well, but a mama's heart's automatically broken when the children's heart's broken, isn't it? But I've seen her work and do I, man, I worked on heavy trucks for 22 years, and a lot of days worked like a dog, hard, heavy work. But I probably had a break compared to what she was going through when she was at home with those four children. She homeschooled our children. Our oldest two boys went to school. Our oldest two children were boys. The boys they went to public school for one of them till the third grade, I think, and the other one till kindergarten. And after that, we made decisions for them to have Christian education. And she raised them, and how long did she homeschool? For, well, 20 years or over. Our oldest son, who's, uh, well, in his 30s, now is he 33, 32, somewhere along in there. I should know that, but I'm under a lot of pressure right now to remember those things. But I'm just trying to say that the year he was graduating from high school, our youngest daughter was starting kindergarten. So she would taught him from the fourth grade up, and then she had to start over from kindergarten and go all the way to senior high. Makes no, there's going no regret. She'd do it again in a heartbeat. I think she would. She definitely would. But I'm saying I've seen seen her heart tore out. I've seen her heart overjoyed. And let's first of all let's talk about. Uh, I'm thankful my children had a great mother. Thankful I had a good mother. I got a good mother-in-law too. And I would have said that if she wasn't sitting over there smiling real big right now. A mother's heart. First thing under that mother's heart, I'd like to say this morning, and the highest priority of anything I'd say this morning, is hopefully a believing heart. In Acts 16, I've already pointed out that it said and pointed out that Timotheus' mother was a believer. And I want to ask you this morning, not just our mothers that are here today, not just all ladies here, but to all uh, everybody's here today, do you know Jesus Christ, your Savior? Are you a believer today? But she was a believer. So important in a home now, uh, there's no such thing as a Christian home without Christian parents. There may be Christian children get saved from other influence, but there's so much importance of being Christian parents, and uh, I'll talk about that a little bit more as we go on. But uh, hopefully a believing heart, a mother's heart. And then there's a heart subject to great pain. Proverbs 10, once as a wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. There's a couple of places in the Bible that brings out that subject, kind of like the, the honor to the father and all that, but the heaviness and brokenness and the sorrow and those things when the children uh, uh, go, go astray or, or whatever may be the case, that it breaks the mother's heart. And you know why? Because mama's got a big old heart. Mama's love those babies. Mama's got pretty much an unconditional love for those babies that's so subject to great pain and and man, it, it hurts when your children hurt, boy. But boy, us daddies, I don't think we have a, a clue what it's like, what, the, what the pain those mothers go through. Proverbs 29, 15, the Bible says, The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringing his mother to shame. Isn't that something? 
I just want to say to the young people here today, um, from, uh, and, and I wish I could say this to all the ones in the back, be old enough to understand, but all of us, uh, be sure to honor our parents. Be sure the Bible teaches us to honor our parents, but be sure to honor them and all. Don't, don't, don't be the cause of our mother's shame. But not only is that mother's heart, hopefully a believing heart, but a heart subject to great pain, but it's also a subject of great joy. Man, I, I miss my children all, all out and on their own, all got, you know, working and uh, chasing their children around. And, you know, we've got eight grandchildren, and uh, I, I miss them. We're going to get to spend time with some of them today. Uh, at Christmas time, I think it was, or I don't know, recently, we got one of those little picture frames, little digital picture frames. You know what I'm talking about? This little pictures come on there, and then they change every few seconds. And, and uh, the children all have the codes to it. They can do it by their phones. They can send and upload pictures. They can send pictures. And, man, sometimes we're in there, and, and uh, man, the little thing will make some kind of little noise and look over and got some new pictures of the grandchildren. And, boy, you turn, turn the television off, put that cut, cut stove off, let's go in there and rejoice. Let's watch them grandchildren pictures. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But the great joy of children, one well, of the joy of seeing our children through the years trust Christ as their Savior, the joy of going to their weddings, going to seeing the, going to the and she's been in the in the delivery room with every one of our grandchildren when they were born. I think everyone didn't, I know COVID almost messed that up, but was in there with every one of them. The great joy. Thy father in Proverbs twenty three twenty five. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and she that bear thee shall rejoice. That's an outward expression of joy. John third John chapter one verse four. Well, 3 John verse 4 says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. I wish it was that our four children could be here today. I, I love it, and I ha they have had opportunities to slip in and surprise us times like this, but I'm, but I'm more glad that they're in their churches serving God today in their churches and walking in truth. So the mother's heart, well, that mother's heart, I'll talk a little bit more toward the end of the service, uh, but such a, has to be quite a flexible heart, doesn't it, for the range of emotions and the, from one extreme to the other and, and the testing the mother's heart may take. But let's talk about for a minute, last year I preached the many hats a mother must wear. I don't know how many of you remember that message, but it was talking about the hats and that mothers wear, and uh, kind of, uh, if you don't get that uh, little old saying, you know, somebody goes to work and they're a supervisor and they have to work on the plumbing, they have to uh, go to the store and get supplies, whatever, you say they have to wear a lot of hats to work. Mothers sure wear a lot of hats, don't they? I mean, very uh, multi purpose, multifunctional, I guess you could say. Mothers' hats. Boy, some, so many duties they have to wear. I think about the German. Soldier, those old big old iron or brass helmets had to wear the helmet of a warrior. Mothers have to wear a helmet of a warrior. Well, they got to fend those children. They got to defend those children. Uh, they got to take up for them. If you don't believe me, umpire a little league ball game and call little Johnny out on a close play, and you will see a real literal fire breathing dragon approach the fence and tell you how she felt about your eyesight not being very good. They have to be doctors or nurses. When I was a little boy, we used to go to creeks and ride. We'd all load up in the back of a pickup truck and get in, go to pull off side the road. And it's just what poor folks did back then. I don't know. It's big day entertainment. We, we didn't know it was poor. We thought we was rich folks. We got to go play in the creek. And we'd go run around barefooted in the creek and run up and down the creek and catch water bugs. Y'all remember them? Little black water bugs scooting across the water like they was water skiing. We'd catch them things and all. And you're subject to cut your feet on, on roots and rocks and all that. Boy, would get injured all up. And, and I think about Daddy brought home a big old tractor tire. Work. They worked on heavy equipment. He, he brought home a big old tractor tire, and, and they got some sand back then. You didn't go to play, Playland Toys or, 
or when these toy stores and buy that, that safe sand that's been washed and all, they just got whatever dirt they could get. They had whatever it had in it, and we'll put it in there. And we'd go out there and play for hours, and that sand, it's a sad thing. Children don't do that anymore. They sit in the house, and it's run them. They just sit there and play with that thing all day long. Man, we built all kind of creations, and more of them Tonka trucks slap out playing in that sandbox and all. But let me just say this, where I'm going with that, is you play in that sandbox enough and out in the yard enough, you get things come up on you. I remember them old rising bumps. Now, there ain't nothing real spiritual to be talking about, but y'all know what I'm talking about, them old rising bumps. We get them things. Boy, mama get in there. She knew just how to doctor on it. She'd get the mashing on the thing, mash you till you was half dead. <laughs> then, then when she got, get, took care of that, she'd get that methylate out and finish killing you. <laughs> Surely she had a degree in, and hey, all that's before Google. They just knew what to do, how to be good doctors, and still do. Whether it be a cool rag on their forehead when they feel a little bit nauseated, or boy, and how many of y'all ever put that, your, your mama's put Vic Sav on your, on your chest. You had a little bit of a cold, they'd rub that Vic Sav on your chest. I learned later on in life, if you couldn't sleep, you could rub that stuff on your eyes. You, you may not go to sleep, but you keep your eyes closed. Brother Brian, get a little statement, everybody, a release form they got to sign for they can leave in case anybody tries that. I don't want to be responsible. <laughs> the many hats a mother must wear, a warrior, a doctor, a fearless leader. Mamas amazed me. They got something God put in them that us daddies didn't get. Ladies, that's a good time if y'all say amen right there. Sometimes when our children were little, Sarah Beth is our youngest daughter, before, even before she was born, it was just three of them. Every now and then I'd take three of them to the store or occasionally keep them at home. And I was, man, I was scared to death. Like, if she's going to be doing something for two hours and I had them for two hours, whew, man, I'd be like four days put together in two hours. I'm scared, slapped dead, didn't know what to do. I mean... Unless they were all nap, taking a nap. And then I'd be scared one of them would wake up. <laughs> but then after Sarah Beth was born, when it's four of them, man, she'd take them all four to Kroger. She'd go to Walmart and come home and cook a big old meal. I blew my mind. How does she do that? <laughs> I, I, whoo, I struggled. I could take one to the store, okay, but man, three or four of them, I was... Got to do it in my eyes and back of the head, mama's got. They just, they just know they can do it, man. Mother's heart, the mother's hats, the mother's home. And I guess we could, and last year we did. I, I didn't use these exact hats last year, but, but uh, we could also have a hat of homemaker and all the different things that do that, but the mother's home. And I, I know society's different and, and all and more mothers work outside the home. But whether you work outside of the home or not, mothers, you got a full-time job. And, and I said that earlier today. I, I could go home and go out and work on trucks and do the heaviest, dirtiest job. And, and I probably didn't. I mean, I may have lifted heavier things and probably didn't get dirtier. But, but I, I mean, I may have worked physically harder in that sense. But really what I did was an easy day compared to what she would do at the four children home, particularly teaching them when we had one in junior high, one in high school, and uh, one in elementary school, and one uh, playing with toys, trying to keep her occupied till she started school. It's often said the mother's the Holy Spirit figure in the home. And now there's old saying that if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. But mothers in their homes, what a really a bond that ought to be there that is there and the duties they have there and the joy, the laughter, the sadness, the responsibilities. And let me just say this, Father's Day is around the corner, but Daddy, ain't nothing wrong with getting up helping Mama fix the meal. Ain't nothing wrong with helping her. Uh, I remember as a little boy watching my granddaddy uh, when I'd spend the night with him and Mama Nanny would cook stuff and 
And uh, we'd, after the meal, granddaddy would all go, go over and help her dry the dishes and put them up for and all that. And I guess I learned that from there. And not every meal did I do that, but I try to help her uh, load and unload the dishwasher. And, and sometimes I'll fold, a, fold some clothes or something. You looked up at me like I don't, but you just wait and see what I was going to say. <laughs> you just wait and see how bad I do some of that. But, I, but I'm just trying to say, man, ain't nothing wrong with helping the wife out around the house sometimes, particularly they got little ones and all. I ain't sure about a man coming home from work, sitting in his recliner all day while his wife, I mean, the rest of the night while his mama's been, while his wife's been working, tending the children all day long, or working a job, then come home, tend the children, and got to cook, do dishes, do clothes, and all that, and daddy sits on his lazy behind. But the mother's home. The Bible in Proverbs 31 is a whole passage about that. And I'll just give you a couple of verses. In verse 27, 28, the Bible says, She looketh well, looketh well. She does look well. <laughs> but back to what the Bible says, it says, She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth. Her. Boy, that's good stuff, isn't it? Boy, we ought to praise these, these wives, these mothers. They ought to be praised for their labors and for their work and the home and the keeping of a home and the children of the home, the meals, all that's done. Uh, back, to, back to that, let's see. We've looked at the, the mother's heart. We've talked about the mother's hats, the mother's home, about a mother's hands. You know, there's an old song years ago, I think. A, if I remember right, my, I think it's a girl named Kathy Mateo sang a song called Daddy's Hands. Was that right? Did I get that right? But some of y'all might remember those songs, Daddy's Hands. And, and I understand that. That's rightfully so. And the work that God designed men to do to be the providers of a home and work with the hands and the sweat of the brow over there in Genesis, all by God's design. It just calls Daddy, uh, the Bible says the sweat of the brow don't mean that Mama's hands don't work hard too. Well, think about that cooking well, if I could give you a dollar for every meal, not, not the meal being supper, but the meal being six times, six meals at supper, if I could give you a dollar for every meal you've prepared, shoot, we go to Hawaii for about two weeks. But the cooking, the cleaning. <laughs> that was another song. <laughs> the cooking... The cleaning. <laughs> Wait a minute, I got to get over that. <laughs> I, I, no, it's fine, sister. It happens to the best of us. I'm just thinking, what in the world would prov- cause the phone all of a sudden to start singing Keeper of the Stars? You know, just I, out of the blue. I didn't say stars. Siri wasn't listening to me. She wouldn't recognize my voice, probably anyway, if Siri even lives in that phone. Cooking, cleaning. The coloring, teach them to stay in the lines. When that stay in lines, mama's job in a lot of places keeping, not that they stay in lines. I mean, yes, that they would, but they teach their children to stay in the lines of life and the lines of the Word of God and the lines teaching them right from wrong as they're little children. And then the, the coloring, the cleaning, the cooking, the coloring, the teaching of staying in those lines and oftentimes the chastening. I just have to be honest with you. Uh, I was bigger than my mom when I was probably 11 years old. And mama's whoopings just didn't hurt very bad. I mean, or at all for that matter. While daddy, on the other hand, the big old hand's been working on bulldozers all day. Them things hurt. But there's something different about mama's whoopings. You know, they'll say anybody's going to hurt me worse than does you. Daddy's that really ain't so But for mamas, I believe there's probably some truth to it. That's probably why I didn't hurt. Now, some of y'all got their mamas and tennis shoe mamas. They take one tennis shoe off and whoop you around in circles with that tennis shoe. I could outrun my mama. I didn't have to worry about that. I'm talking about in circles. I wouldn't run away from her. But the chasing that a mother must do with the children. Mama's whoopings didn't hurt like daddy's whoopings, but they hurt her more. As a matter of fact, it hurt them when, when Daddy did the whooping. 
I remember a few times being a little bit aggravated with them and get on them a little bit hard. And Mom said, come on, all right. They, they learned it. They got, their, they got their lesson. A mother's honor. I've already read these verses. Proverbs 31, 27, 28. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Any husband worth his salt ought to praise his wife in public and in private. And children ought to honor mothers. The Bible says too, to honor your parents, honor your mother and your father. I remember years ago I was working and sitting in the break room at work and this fellow sitting there and bad-mouthing folks and bad-mouthed his mama said a few ugly things about his mama and there's a big old strong big old guy I worked with just old now I don't mean this ugly but like a biker looking guy if you got a bike I just want to ride I'm not against bikers just a big old rough tough strong as a bull man that boy was bad-mouthing his mama and Bill looked over at Billy and said boy don't ever talk about your mama in front of me like that again now, I'm not promoting violence or meanness or nothing like that. I don't mean that. I'm just saying we ought to honor our mothers. Mothers may not always be perfect, but I can't find what the Bible says honor their mother if she's a perfect mother. We ought to honor our mothers regardless. Children for all of our life, we ought to honor our mothers. Exodus 20, verse 12, the Bible says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Mamas have their hands full for sure. Mothers certainly wear different, many different hats. And a mama's heart is subject to experience every emotion from fear to laughter, from anger to great gladness, and anywhere in between. And then she gets out of bed in the morning and the rest of the day starts. I mean, boy, the thing about the mother's heart and the emotions. Mothers get strong arms from hard work and lifting them babies. Strong legs from chasing little toddlers around all day long. But no doubt the most tried part of a mom is her heart. Let's stay here for a minute. And we'll close on the thought of the heart. I want to get real serious for a few minutes. I want to ask you, not just mothers, but everybody here today. How's your heart? I'm not talking about blood pressure. I'm not talking about medical. Or for that matter, even the muscle that pumps blood in your chest. I'm talking about your heart. The seat of your emotions, that part of you that loves the eternal part of you, the soul. You know, now, there may be somebody here today that's, uh, that's not saved, and if I'd ask you, how's your heart? you say, well, I'm fine. I'm a good person. I, I do pretty good. I'm, I'm sure I go to heaven because I'm a good person. I just want to say today, it doesn't work that way. And that's not according to me. That's according to the Word of God. For the Bible says in Jeremiah 17, verse 9, the Bible says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And of the sweetest mother, this the best mother to a children and, uh, that, that, uh, that has all the things that we might society say is a, a great mother, that, that's honorable, that's great and all, but that heart without Jesus is an incomplete heart, and, and, that, and that person still is a person that's against God. Uh, and what I'm saying, that enmity with God uh, and, and does not have favor of God. And it doesn't matter how good a mother, it doesn't matter how good of a daddy, it doesn't matter how good of parents, it doesn't matter how good of a person we are, we all come short of the glory of God. And please understand that. But the best part of thing about the heart for be for a mother to be a believing mother. In John 3, 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I said those things about being a, a good person doesn't carry weight with God. Because we all come short of his. The comparison is God's holiness. And we all come short of that. He's pure holiness. He's the definition of holiness. 
I want to go back to the Garden of Eden and explain the story there where man took a great plunge and fall when God created Adam and Eve in their perfection. Sinless state, but he gave them a choice. And they chose to disobey God. And it sunk mankind in sin. And since then, man has been born at odds with God. We've got Adamic blood flowing through our veins. And, and, if, if you, and even if we didn't have that, we all naturally become sinners. Children, you don't have to teach a child to, to sin. And, and mama's got to keep keen eyes to keep even little bitty children from doing things they ought not do because we're born sinners. We're just born that way. Romans 3.10 says, there's none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23 says, for all of sin, it comes short of the glory of God. And that's the standard, the glory of God, the holiness of God. And then there's a price to pay for that. In Romans 6.23, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. Later on in the Revelation, in chapter 20, when they cast off into the eternal lake of fire, he says, and this is the second death. And that's ultimately the price that one must pay for is sin. Except, wait a minute, let me back up. The way to sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, meaning having no Adamic bloodline in his, in his blood. He lived 33 and a half years, tempted in all points, yet without sin. And he died on the old rugged cross of Calvary. He wore that crown of thorns. He was smitten, beaten, plucked his beard, mocked at, made fun of. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they nailed him that cross and stood that cross up and plunked him over in that, that cross on the hole. And he stood there, not stood there, he hung there on that cross, shed his very lifeblood, the water and the blood. To death, He did that for me and you. He paid mine and your sin debt that we don't have to pay our sin debt in eternity for, in hell. But he paid that for us. He was buried and he rose again the third day. Praise God, he's a living Savior. Amen. And he did that for you and I. The Bible says in Romans 5, 8, but God commended his love toward us and that while we we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. Knowing our sinful condition 2,000 years ago when he died on that cross at Calvary. I love that old song, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. Because it's so true. In Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, it's got to do back, this mother's been talking about the hearts a lot. For everybody here today, I want you to know, it's got to do with the heart. It's not got to do with doing good things and being a good person. But what's in your heart is Jesus Christ. And do you have a forgiven heart? Romans 10, verse 9, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with the mouth of the Lord Jesus, if y'all would come forward to the invitation song this morning, I appreciate it. It says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says, believe uh, in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. That's talking about in the judgment. We see him. If he's in our heart, we're not going to be ashamed. It says, For there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. And I want to say the Jew and the Greek has got to do with that period of time. Jesus came into his own, the Jews, and they received him not. And they're nationally blinded, spiritually blinded for a season. And it's the age of the Gentiles. But I want to say, when it says that right there, it says, Whoso believes, uh, it says there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. What I see and how I can apply that, that day, how I can apply that to us today, is it don't matter what you've done. You may say, Preacher, you don't know how bad a person I've been. You don't know the things I've done. You don't know what I've done to a person. You know what? I don't have to know. God already knows, and knowing that about every one of us, he went to bloody Calvary and paid our sin debt anyway. Isn't that love? He loves us so much he did that. He's Lord over all. He's rich in all that call upon him, the Bible says. In verse 13 of Romans 10, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How about you today? Do you know Jesus Christ, your Savior? Have you ever trusted him in a place of repentance, sorrowed over your sin, 
realizing you're a sinner, deserving of hell, cried out to Christ and said, Lord, forgive me. Have you ever done that? Children often follow the paths, the paths of, and imitate their parents. Statistically, by far, saved, faithful parents, children, are way more likely to get saved, and I'm talking about their sins forgiven, a home in heaven, than children of unbelieving parents. I really don't feel like I need to go a lot further on that subject. But let me say that again. Children of believing, faithful parents are statistically by far way more likely to trust Jesus for forgiveness and live their life for Him. Parents, do you know Christ your Savior today? Therefore, parents who don't know Jesus are likely to be modeling a path to eternity that sadly their children will most likely follow right after the parents. Parents go to great lengths nowadays to make sure the children have, and there's nothing wrong with this in, in a sense, there's, go to great lengths to make sure the children participate in every activity offered. Great lengths to see they learn everything they think they should and to have good clothes and good food, nothing wrong with that. But then they neglect their greatest need and that's to hear about Jesus Christ and to be raised in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. We have invitation time now. What I mean by that is, do you know Jesus Christ your Savior? If you're here today and you've never been born again, maybe here today and you realize you're lost, you need to get saved today, come down front, let's talk about it. I'll show you from the scriptures how you can be saved today. Maybe you're here today and and maybe it's just some difficult things in your life you just need to pray about and ask God to help you with. Come on down this old-fashioned altar. Say, Lord, help me. Give me strength. Maybe you're facing a temptation. I don't know, but let me focus back in and zero in mostly on if you're here today and lost and don't know Jesus your Savior, don't leave here in that condition. Christ died for your sins. Won't you trust Him today? Brother Bryant, what song we're singing this morning? 494. 494. Have thine own way, Lord. Stand with me if you can. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. And if you would, no singing. I, I'm not going to stand out invitation to go on and on this morning. But I will say we're going to sing one more verse. If the Holy Spirit of God is working in your heart, you've never been saved, you don't have to go to hell. He's paid your sin debts. Why don't you come this off? Let me show you from the Scripture. I've already read them to you. I want to show you from, show you from the Scripture how you can be saved. Your sin's forgiven today. Note you got a home in heaven. Turn your life over to Christ. Start living in Jesus. And if you got any other reason you need to come to this altar, I'd love to pray for you. You just come meet with the Lord. Whatever you need to do this morning, let's sing one last verse. Have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today, whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now, as in thy presence, humbly I
appreciate your attention this morning. I appreciate everybody that's here today. And uh, those that's listening by live stream, appreciate every one of you. And uh, go enjoy your day. Spend time with family if you can. And, and uh, I, as a statistic, it's kind of interesting day. I mean, interesting on Mother's Day is the most widest used phone day in America and, and uh, on the telephone. And uh, I wish I could call my mom today, my grandmamas. Wish I could. I'm going to spend some time with my mother in law, and she's a good one. Uh, but there was a lot of ladies that's influenced my life, whether they, uh, they didn't give birth to me, they're not my mother, but several ladies that's influenced my life. And I try to call them on Mother's Day and tell them Happy Mother's Day. Some mothers are worthy of honor because they've influenced other people's life, whether they've ever given birth or not. And I believe that. Go spend time with your family. Go have a good day today and then just enjoy a good day today. I appreciate you all being here. Brother Wayne, appreciate you. I know you got a lot going on in your family and all, and I appreciate you being here today. And all. how about if you dismiss in a word of prayer, brother, please? Yes, sir. Well, dear Lord, we, we thank you for our mothers. We thank you for uh, the mothers that are with us and that are passed on, and our grandmothers, and, our, and our, uh, they've loved us so much and done so much for us. Thank you for being here to the Word Preach today, and uh, we thank you for Jesus today. And-